In this video, we're going to look at operations with functions, so basically adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing with fractions. So you can see in this um, table here, this is just different ways that you can represent adding functions. So if you see f plus g of x, it really just means addition. If you see subtraction um, with f and g, it means subtraction within the function. And then same thing with division and multiplication. So just in case you see the different notations. So if we actually go through and try this, this example here, um, we want to find the sum of the functions, the product, and then um, the quotient. So if we look at this first one, I'm going to just go ahead and number these. So I'm going to say this is going to be number one, this will be number two, and then this will be number three. So for the first one here, we're going to find the sum. So that's the same thing as saying f of x plus g of x. So then I'm going to grab those functions. So I have f of x is 4x minus 3 plus g of x, which is 4x squared minus 7x plus 3. And when you're adding or subtracting, all you're really doing is combining like terms. Um, so keep in mind, if I were subtracting, parentheses would be important here. So parentheses around both of these functions, and then I'd have to make sure to distribute um, the negative 1, or to distribute that negative sign. But since this is addition, I don't really need these um, parentheses because there's nothing in front. So I'm going to just go ahead and undo that. I'm going to get rid of them. You can have them and then just kind of rewrite it as the next step but I don't really need them, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just combine like terms. So, And I'm going to write this in standard form, so the highest exponent first. So I have 4x squared and only 4x squared, nothing to combine that with. And then I have 4x and minus 7x, so that's going to give me negative 3x. And then I have a minus 3 and a plus 3, so those are going to cancel. So that's it. So 4x squared minus 3x is the final answer. That's as far as you can go with it. So that's addition. Subtraction works the same thing, except for you would have to distribute that negative sign first. The next one I want to look at is multiplication. So this is f of x times g of x. So again, remember this notation is the same thing as this. So that means we're going to multiply. When you multiply, it's important that you keep the parentheses or that you add and, and keep the parentheses around them. So I have 4x minus 3 times g of x, which is 4x squared minus 7x plus 3. I have to keep the parentheses because each term in this first binomial has to get multiplied by each term in the trinomial. So the parentheses are representing that you're distributing that 4x through, and then you're distributing the negative 3 through to each of the terms. Um, so you have to have the parentheses. Another way to multiply, so you could just actually go through and do it, but another way is to use a grid. So I want to show you that. That's the way that I like to do it. Um, it's just to make sure that you don't forget any terms. So in this situation, I'd have a 2 by 3 grid because I have two terms multiplied by three terms. So when I do that, it would be 4x and then minus 3, and then across the top is going to be 4x squared minus the 7x, oops, I didn't mean to turn that, um, minus, let me undo this here, there we go, so minus 7x plus 3, there we go, so then I can multiply, so basically instead of thinking about it as distributing this 4x to each piece, I'm just going to take it in the grid and I'm going to multiply it by each term. Um, it's just a visual way of setting it up. So 4x times 4x squared is going to be 16x to the third, so you multiply the coefficients, keep the x, add the um, exponents. 4x times negative 7x is negative 28x squared. 4x times 3 is going to be 12x. And then I continue with the bottom row here. So 4x squared times negative 3, negative 12x squared. Negative 3 times negative 7x is going to be positive 21. Keep the x. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. The nice thing about um, using the grid, most times like terms occur in the diagonals. So when you go to add, it makes it a little bit easier when you go to combine your like terms at the end. So if I can 
continue down with my work here, the product of this is going to be, again, in standard form, so 16x to the third. And then I'm going to combine these, so the negative 28 minus 12 is going to be negative 40x squared. And then 12 plus 21 is going to give me 33, so plus 33x, and then keep the minus 9. And there's your final answer. So, of course, you could have done that without the grid. You could have just written all of the terms out and then combined them. It really doesn't matter. It's just a preference. So then the last one we're going to look at is division. So division, let me write this out. So we have g of x divided by f of x for this example. So we have g of x is going to be 4x squared minus 7x plus 3 divided by 4x minus 3. So notice too that we're not really using this h of x, so you could cross that off if you want. It wasn't used in any of the examples. Um, you can leave it, it's fine, but we're not using it. And when we look at this division example, um, there is such thing as long division with polynomials or something called synthetic division. That's not something we're going to worry about for this class. Um, it does exist, but what we're going to see is whenever we have division like this and if we're told that we have to simplify it, what it really means is we need to find the factors of the numerator and hopefully the denominator will cancel one of those factors. So what I want to do off to the side here is I'm going to factor that numerator. So um, in order to factor that, so let me just, there's a couple different techniques you can use. So we're going to factor 4x squared minus 7x plus 3. And a couple different strategies. One is just guess and check. And for me, that never has been a good method to use. It just confuses me. Um, you can use AC slide method, where you, or factor by regrouping is what it's called. Some people call it slide and divide. There's a lot of different techniques. One that I've found that I like the best is using a grid. So again, kind of thinking about how we multiplied and going backwards with it. Um, so the grid, what, it, what you do is you set this up. So it's going to be a 2 by 2 because it's going to be a binomial times a binomial is going to give us this trinomial. And that will always be the case. And then you take the first term and you write it in the first box. And then you take the last term and you write it in the last box. And then what you do from here is you have to find numbers that are going to add to the middle number. So the numbers are going to have to add to negative 7. So I usually write this right under the box. Usually I'll write A for add and M for multiply, but since this is the first example, I'm writing out the full words. And they have to multiply to the product of these numbers. So 4 times 3 is going to give us 12, so my numbers have to multiply to 12. Those numbers that satisfy are going to go right here. So numbers that are going to add to a negative and multiply to a positive, well, if we're multiplying to a positive, we have to have the same sign. So positive, positive will not add to a negative, so they're going to both be negative. So negative 3 and negative 4 both multiply to positive 12 and add to negative 7. So in the box here, I'm going to write negative 3x and then negative 4x. We always put an x with it because um, it's just how you'll get the negative 7x. So basically that's how it's working is if you were to combine your like terms, like what we did in this last step for multiplying, if I combine my like terms, I would end up with the trinomial I started with. So 4x, combine these, negative 7x, plus 3. So that's why you put the x with it because it's supposed to represent the trinomial. And now to get the factors or the numbers that you have to multiply to get the trinomial, you just do the GCF. So what I do is I take out the biggest thing I can take out, or the GCF out of the first row. So the biggest thing that I can take out of both of these is an X. And then I just kind of fill in the multiplication. So X times what gives me 4X squared? Well, it'd have to be 4X. And then X times what gives me negative 3X? So it'd be minus 3. And then 4X times what gives me negative 4? It'd have to be negative 1. And then you always check the last one. Negative 1 times negative 3 gives me um, positive 3. So that's good. So the factors are the sides right here. So 4x minus 3. Oops, let me try that again. 
4x minus 3 times x minus 1. So if we were to multiply those using the grid, you'd get the inside. So it's just kind of reversing the factoring. Um, and like I said, some people do guess and check to figure that out. However it works for you um, is totally fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my division over here and I'm going to replace the trinomial with its factors. And hopefully you noticed that the factor, one of the factors in the numerators is the same as the denominator, which is great because when you divide anything by itself, it equals 1 and we're left with just x minus 1. And that's it.